Good morning. I'm Mayor Tommy Roberts. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. My guest this morning is Corey Styron, who is the Director of the Parks Recreation and Cultural Affairs Department at the City of Farmington. And Corey, it's good to have you back as a guest. Thank you, Mayor. Good to be here. Corey, I want to take us back uh, to last summer in a decision that was made uh, regarding Brookside Pool. The uh, staff recommended to the City Council that we not operate, uh, open and operate Brookside Pool uh, during the summer of 2016. And uh, the reason for that was uh, the, the uh, problems in complying with state law for the operation of a, of a public swimming pool. And we had a number of issues uh, with equipment and the facility in general. 60-year-old facility uh, served its purpose well in Farmington. I can remember as a small child uh, walking the Brookside Pool from about uh, a mile, a mile and a half away on summer afternoons and uh, playing in the pool myself with my friends. And uh, so it's an iconic place in Farmington. The decision to not open it was a difficult decision for the council to make, but the decision made a lot of sense. In lieu of uh, operating Brookside Pool last summer, we opened Lake Farmington to recreational swimming. And by all accounts, that proved to be a huge success. And we want to commend staff uh, for that idea and for facilitating that idea. Uh, in fact, we uh, are proceeding with plans to reopen Lake Farmington this summer uh, with a, a greater presence, a larger presence. We'll expand the beach and we'll be able to accommodate more people out there this summer. But nevertheless, we have a facility at Brookside Park that's unused. And um, council gave staff the direction that it wanted to consider alternative uses for that space. Uh, those alternatives could be uh, reopening a flat water uh, pool facility, much on the order of the old facility, or doing something on a much grander scale. And so today, I want to talk about uh, those options. What is providing the impetus uh, for this discussion today is the fact that uh, our architectural design consultants had met with the city council last week at the city council meeting to present an update on the design phase and uh, the council was presented with four alternatives. And uh, I want you to you know, just start uh, out with a discussion of what those four alternatives are. Well, I think it's important to, to back up too and, and remind me, we had some great public feedback for this when we first broached this and had our public meetings back in November. Uh, we had 60 some people come out physically and talk to us. And then we did something um, kind of unique for us is we actually posted comments with examples to get feedback on Facebook. And uh, we had 1,200 people comment on the survey uh, with Facebook that really helped us kind of define some of the options that, we, that we're going to talk about and shared with you. Um, going into this process, we, we really wanted to look at about three options. Uh, Due to the, to the iconic legend of, of Brookside, we wanted to see what it would be to uh, replace a, a similar type structure. Um, and then we looked at um, the growing trend across this industry for municipal governments or some type of family uh, water park type deal. Um, this allows um, more use for the families, a broader age group. And we looked at those in a couple of different price ranges, one about $3 million and one about $5 million. It was really interesting that um, almost overwhelmingly the support was for some type of family aquatic park with slides and kitty areas. Uh, there was a good contingency that wanted um, some type of outdoor lap lanes. Um, we think there's a solution in some of the options presented for that. But it really is, uh, one of the comments that kept coming up was go big or go home, which we found interesting. So our first option that we're, that we're gonna show people is basically a, a redo of Brookside. Um, it's going to require some significant improvements to the bathhouse area. Uh, we're going to need to increase the footprint and improve our ADA accessibility. So we'll have a little bit different configurations for restrooms and access. Uh, give us a little more room, a little more privacy in that area. And then we kind of reduced the footprint because we built a, a lane, a swim lane for the last that was kind of an odd shape. It was a 40 
yard pool is typically they're either 50 or they're 25. So we reduced that to about 25, adding the diving wells. Um, due to the fact that we're going to have to completely redo the shell and the piping, um, it's going to be about a $3 million project. And that would be on the same footprint as currently exists? Yes, sir. It's exactly on the same footprint. No additional space at the facility. Uh, no impact to parking, tennis courts, skate parks, or anything like that. And my recollection is that the projected cost for that option is a little over $2 million. Uh, this one here with the architectural fees is about $3 million total project. That, that one is as well? Yes. Okay. Well, that uh, segues into a discussion of the second option, which I thought was about the $3.2 million option. But um, it is one of those options that would uh, incorporate some slides and other features, other water features. Talk, talk about that option. This is a little bit smaller footprint in the area. Um, we basically have a, a slide element, a, a playground structure uh, with a zero depth entry where the water gets only about 18 inches. So there's some opportunity for um, some of the toddlers and some of the, the older kids to have something to do. Uh, it really, um, what's limiting about it is it doesn't provide a space for uh, some of the parents to congregate in the water because of the zero depth entry. Um, it's kind of a, a mid-range, it's, it's a little bit a, a above a, a redo, uh, but not quite um, as broad as we would hope to impact as many users as possible. And this one also uses the same footprint, does it not? Yes, sir, it does. It's got both footprints. And, and when I talk about the footprint, um, what comes to my mind is the fact that we have tennis courts uh, to the west of the existing facility. And so option number one and option number two, I believe, both maintain the, the tennis courts. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And actually, all of the options um, we presented are on the same footprint, basically inside the fence area where we have now. All of them are in that footprint. We did take um, with the options 3A and 3B, we did show a phase two that could potentially take in part of the tennis courts or some of the tennis courts area. Um, but the, the meat of the projects that we're looking at now are within the existing footprint of, of Brookside. And phase two is a $3.2 million total cost projection today. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the third option in there too two different options under option three. And uh, so if you'll describe those options. Um, 3A um, really begins to take us to a little bit more of a water park element. Uh, we have the slides, uh, we have the zero depth entry, we have a little bit of a configuration for a, a well, um, an area where people can maybe do a climbing wall. There is a little bit of flat water there, um, not too structured. Uh, and then, then 3B also has a lazy river with a nice circular area for people to congregate. So they're, they're very similar. Um, uh, the slides are the, are the fun part. Um, we do have a couple options with the slides. They're either slides into a separate catch basin, or we can have them as run out slides where you just slide out into a big splash of water and all of those are very popular. Some of the other amenities we looked at were uh, pavilion areas so that you could have a, a birthday party kind of in a private area if you wanted to rent it out that way. We're looking at capitalizing on our food trucks and maybe we have a food truck vendor there so you can uh, buy some concessions from that type of person there and really create a fun and, and nice experience. What is the difference between options A and B under option three? Uh, the, the lazy river affords us the ability to get more people in there than the, the pool structure and, and 3A. Um, where we're looking at somewhere around 260 people in a, in a single hour. Uh, the other one's right around 200. So it gives us more capacity and ability to cater to more people. And I think it also offers uh, a wider age group of activities than probably 3A. Both 3A and 3B have a price tag of a little over $5 million, $5.2 million approximately. So as we go from one option to the next, we're stepping up, obviously, in, in total cost. That begs the question about the economics of, of um, operating one of these kinds of facilities. Can you talk about um, where that uh, leaves us in terms of operating costs, revenues that can be generated from attendance, and other revenue sources? 
that's that's a really great point, and and that was one of the things that um, really spurred us to to do some more digging with this and actually start the feasibility study. Is some of the benchmark cities and, and counties that we looked at, these are actually revenue neutral or do a little positive revenue for operational cost. And um, with this particular model, with the fact that we can have birthday parties or swimming lessons or rentals in addition to our daily attendance. Um, as you move up to 3A and 3B, offer us the ability to not rely on operational funds from the, from the general fund to operate these things for about 100 days a year. So they would basically be paying themselves for their operational cost. Option, option one and option two, because of the, the, the lower volume, they don't quite get to that point. Um, but there still are a reduced um, subsidy on the general fund. The discussion uh, at, at the council level thus far has been uh, centered around, uh, to a large extent, about the ability to pay for the upfront costs of building one of these kinds of facilities. So if we're looking at the option three scenario, we're looking at uh, upfront costs of about $5 million, a little over $5 million. And the council, uh, with the assistance of staff, has been focusing on a refinancing of existing bonded indebtedness in order to generate new money. Uh, probably be uh, something where we could generate enough to pay for the cost of, a, of an option three type of facility, and then there'd be some excess, excess money for some other purposes. The idea, though, uh, from the council perspective would be uh, to not increase the burden on the general fund. So whatever amount of uh, bonded indebtedness we sell, we would have to have a debt service level on an annual basis that doesn't exceed, exceed the debt service that is outstanding with our current bonds. So um, you know, I would call that as being a desire to, to be, have a neutral impact on our general fund as well. We don't want to increase any additional general fund uh, expense under the current economic circumstances that we're dealing with. Um, what do you think the, the viability of that approach is? Well, I, I think based on the, the numbers that we have looked at that it can, it can cover its operational cost. Uh, I think that there are some really good opportunities to use these funds to maybe help develop our, another leg of tax base in our community. Uh, while this would be a huge uh, addition to our community for our residents here, uh, there's not one of these type of attractions for a couple hours either way we go. So this would be a unique venue that we would draw outside people that maybe come to town, spend a little extra time in our community, <clears throat> maybe go to one of our restaurants, buy a tank of gas, shop at the mall, and help with the grocery seats tax by beginning to give us a destination event. And even our CVB saw the value in this by even sponsoring part of the, this feasibility study. Um, they paid two thirds of it just on that fact alone that it could be an economic driver or an economic element for our community as well. My recollection from the, uh, the uh, information session that was provided to the council was that the option three scenarios are based on uh, daily attendance ranging anywhere from 415 to 625 people. That's a lot of people uh, if you are just thinking about Farmington and the population of Farmington. But we know that we draw from 100 miles uh, radius of Farmington. And uh, we're expecting that this kind of facility will bring in, be bringing in a lot of people uh, from outside of our area who won't just be attending the aquatic uh, facility, they'll be in town for a while, they'll be spending money at other places as well. So uh, that's the part of the economic justification for serious consideration of doing this project. I think in, in closing this segment, um, I want to talk about what the next steps are. Uh, the council hasn't um, made any decisions on this at this point. We just received the report. Uh, there will be a much uh, more detailed discussion as the council is deciding on its priority for capital improvement projects in the next uh, year to five years, and that will be something that's coming up in the, in the short term. So we'll have that discussion shortly. Um, is there anything else that you think we ought to advise our viewers of with respect to this project? 
I think it's I think it's a great opportunity to add another element. As you mentioned, the the beach at the lake was a huge success. This will give people another reason uh, to be proud of their community. Something that a lot of people currently visit Cortez and Durango to. They have a couple of indoor facilities there that they participate in. There's nothing like splashing in the water and being out in the sun, sunshine during the summer. So I think um, we've got something for everybody. We tried to do a good job of listening here and get the, the key elements we could within our budget. I think it's an exciting opportunity for our community to have some real community pride and a, and a great asset that a lot of people will enjoy using. Corey, I want to thank you for being with me this morning. I think it is something that uh, will generate some very uh, interesting discussion among the council members. Uh, you know, prior discussion leads me to believe that uh, um, the council will take a very measured approach to this and uh, will try to analyze our current economic conditions and whether or not we can actually do a project like this and have it be uh, neutral on, on our operating budget. Uh, um, in your department as well as in the general fund. And so it's going to be a difficult decision, but uh, I, I know that the council will give it due consideration. Thank you for being uh, here with me this morning. Thank you, Mayor. And thank all of you for uh, joining us once again on the Mayor's Table. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next Monday.